spirit, the Prochemenon and the seventh tone, the Lord shall give strength to his people, the Lord shall bless his people with peace. The Fish, 
and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the load to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. Jesus. So this boy comes up to his father who is busy working on his computer. And the boy says, Dad, can I ask you a question? The dad, without looking up from his computer, says, Sure, what is it? The boy says, Well, the Bible says that God created the world in six days. How did he do that? Dad says, I don't know. The boy says, well, you know, the Bible also talks about Moses parting the Red Sea. How did he do that? Dad goes, that, that's a good question. I don't know. Well, you know, Jesus fed 5,000 people, the boy says. He fed 5,000 people with only five loaves and two fish. How, how was he able to do that? The dad says, well, another good question. I, I, I don't know. The boy says, Dad, I hope you don't mind me asking you all of these questions. And the dad goes, oh, sure, son. How else are you going to learn anything? <laughs> so unlike that father, Jesus actually did have answers to the, to the big questions that his disciples asked. And his miracles and his parables were designed to teach his disciples valuable lessons. And that brings us to the gospel reading this morning, the feeding of the 5,000. By the way, other than the Jesus' resurrection, this is the only miracle that is recorded in all four gospels. So it's pretty important. We see, in fact, in early Christian uh, iconography, uh, of the agape feast and the wedding feast of the Lamb, we see these images of, of the five loaves in those icons. And, of course, where do we see that today? Where do we see the five loaves in our services? In, in, in the vigil service, right? We have the five loaves. Sometimes in talking about this miracle, we focus on the how rather than the why. The Bible doesn't tell us the how, but it does tell us the why. And for that, we have to turn to John's uh, version of this, of this uh, event. And he says, Jesus, and John, he says, Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these people may eat? But Jesus said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. So in other words, he is, he is using this to test his disciples, to test their faith. Up to this point, Jesus had been doing all the work. Now it's time for the disciples to act. You know, they see the great multitudes and, and they say, well, you know, we don't, have any, we don't have anything to give them. We need to send them away, send the people away. And Jesus said, no, don't, don't tell them to go away. You give them something to eat. So he's putting this back on the disciples and saying, you give them something to eat. And the disciples look at the multitude and say, well, we only have five loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, that's okay. Give what you have. Give what you have. Jesus didn't need their food. We all know that. I mean, he could have rained down food from heaven, right? But he wanted his disciples to work together with him, to be partners in his ministry, and to learn a valuable lesson. The disciples' perspective was one of, of limited possibilities. But Jesus is able to do abundantly beyond 
all that we ask or think, right? And it took the disciples a while for them to learn this lesson. In the very next chapter, Jesus is teaching another 4,000 people. And it's the same kind of situation. He calls his disciples to him and he says, I have compassion on this multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I don't want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Then his disciples said to him, where can we get enough bread in the wilderness to feed such a great multitude? And Jesus said to them, how many, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few little fish. Now remember, they had just seen Jesus feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, probably more like 12,000 if you count women and children. And now they have seven loaves and a few fish. So they should be thinking, well, this should be, this should be no problem. We only have 4,000 people now, right? But they, were, they still seem to be perplexed about what to do. Now, brothers and sisters, lest we be too hard on the disciples, how long does it take us sometimes to learn the lessons that God wants to teach us? How long before God's lessons finally sink in? You know, I was thinking, remember back when we were first starting to talk about building our new temple and, and, and trying to raise, you know, we were talking about raising money to build the new temple. And the goal seemed insurmountable. I mean, it was so much money. How, how are we ever going to be able to raise that much money? And I'll be honest, brothers and sisters, there were times when I wondered whether I was ever going to be able to serve in our new temple. I mean, after all, uh, according to Father Ian, I'm not getting any younger. In fact, I don't even buy green bananas anymore. <laughs> but you know, as I look out on now on that on that sign in front of our property, I'm thinking, man, me a little faith. God is going to do this. Is going to happen. This is really going to happen. And it's just realize that my faith has been so small and my perspective is so limited but God is going to make this happen. We look around and we see such great need. We see there's so many homeless people. We see so much poverty and we see so much despair and hunger and we think you know why doesn't God do something about this? And Jesus says to us, you give them something to eat, right? And that's what we do every week in the food closet. That's what we're doing. Sometimes we think, well, we don't, there, there's so many people coming now to the, to the food closet, and we think, you know, are we going to have enough? But there always is enough. God always provides. We just give whatever we have. Jesus says, give what you have, and the Lord will multiply it. We don't have to possess extraordinary talent or great wealth to serve Christ. We serve Him with what we have. Because in Jesus' hands, a little goes a long way. In Jesus' hands, five loaves and two fish will feed a multitude. Jesus had compassion on people. He came to meet human need. There's that prayer in the liturgy that says, O God, who did send forth the heavenly bread, the food of the whole world, our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, Redeemer, and Benefactor. God's love is sufficient for all human need, and He has chosen to use us. He takes what little faith that we have, what few resources we have, and He multiplies them in miraculous ways. Remember the widow of Zarephath? Uh, third Kings? You all remember the widow of Zarephath. You've been reading your Old Testament, right? So the widow of Zarephath... Elijah the prophet came to, uh, God sent Elijah to come to this widow to, to get something to eat, to ask her for something to eat. It was, and it was during a famine. And the widow was not wealthy. She, he had only a handful of grain and a little oil. This is all coming back to you now, right? 
And she said that you know, all she had was just this little bit of grain and oil and she was going to make something for, for her and her son to eat before they died. And Elijah says, no, first you make me a little cake and then you make something for your, yourself and, and your son. And he says, for thus says the Lord, the bin of flour shall not be used up and the jar of oil shall not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So the woman went and did it, thus she and her children ate for many days. You see, she didn't say, I have too little for God to use me. She was obedient. She simply did what God had put the, what she was asked to do. It's not about how much or how little we have. It's about being obedient in what God has given. Jesus will multiply whatever we bring him to meet the needs of others, for he is good and loves mankind. Christ is in our midst. Yes.
Social development is offering body weight to make it possible, possible. We have a great benefaction to save the world market and have mercy.
Russia, of Washington, D.C., in the Ball of America, and Canada. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and at the ages of ages. The most reverend Benjamin, Archbishop of San Francisco in the West, may the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and at the ages of ages. To all those in priests, leave the last recorded for the Lord God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. <laughs> President of the United States and all civil authorities, and for our armed forces in defense of peace and freedom everywhere, may the Lord our God remember them in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of the ages. of the departments, may the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. All to the Father's life, life, and through faith, and hope of the resurrection of the Lord God remember his kingdom. Always now and ever unto ages of ages, for all those Christians suffering persecution for the faith throughout the world. Lord God, remember his kingdom always now and ever unto ages of ages. All, for all, all those who are sick and suffering, all those in hospitals, nursing homes, institutions, and those who are caring for them, all those suffering because of war, flesh of Ukraine, the flesh of the Holy Land, and all the refugees. May the Lord God, remember his kingdom always now and ever unto ages of ages. For the promise of money by the and apples of labor, those who sing, those who serve, for all those who have no heart. The Lord God, remember his kingdom always now and ever unto ages of ages. You and all the Lord God, remember his kingdom always now and ever unto ages of ages.